you learnt about the exponential function and we are now going to take a look at what happens when we change the a and the q value for the exponential function. So let's firstly take a look at what a does to the graph. Now a does two things. It stretches the graph vertically and if we change the sign of a, so if we change the sign of a, it can also reflect the graph about the asymptote. Okay, so we will have a look and see these two effects and how they affect the graph. Okay, first of all, on the left, we've got sketched the graph f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. We're going to see what happens if we now want to have a look at the graph 2 times 2 to the power of x. Okay, so in other words, what I need to do here is I've got to multiply the y values by 2. Let's just take an x value and see how it works. So 2 to the power of, if we substitute, if we do point negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 1 is a half. Okay, so it'll be 2 times a half. And 2 times a half is 1. So instead of having the point at negative 1 and a half, the graph 2 times 2 to the x will have the point at negative 1 and 1. If we see what happens at negative 2, at negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 2 is a quarter, and 2 times a quarter is a half. So you can see that the x value stays in the same position, but the graph stretches up. The point 0, 2 times 2 to the power of 0 becomes 2, because 2 to the power of 0 is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. Plot one more point. 2 to the power of 1 is uh, 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So you can see that in each case the y value is multiplied by 2. So that has the effect of pulling the graph upwards from its original position. Okay, and if 2 was, and, and if the a value was a fraction, it would have the effect of flattening the graph from its original position. So it would, it would squash or stretch the graph depending. Okay, if we take a look at this graph here, this is the graph f of x is equal to a half to the power of x. And now we can see that because the b value or the base of this um, graph is a fraction, a proper fraction, the graph now descends from left to right. It comes down across the graph. Let's have a look and see what happens if we now plot the graph of negative a half to the power of x. Okay, so all that's going to happen now if we use the same uh, idea that we saw in the previous example is all we need to do is multiply the y values of the original graph by negative 1. So here at negative 1 and 2 we multiply the y value by negative 1 and the point lands up at negative 1 and negative 2. At the value 0 and 1 we multiply the y value by negative 1 so it becomes negative 1. At 1 and a half the y value will become negative a half. So you can see that what happens in this case is the graph is reflected around the asymptote. In this case, the asymptote is the line y equals to zero or the x-axis. Okay, so those are the two effects of the a. If we have a look at the effects of q, q, as with all other functions that we've learned, it shifts the graph up if q is positive, and it shifts the graph down if Q is negative. And because it shifts the graph up and down, it gives you the position of the asymptote. So it's quite an important feature. So if we wanted to have a look at the graph f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, we would shift the original graph up by one unit. So all the points that we had originally on the graph, we would simply move them one block up and sketch our new graph in its new position. And the asymptote of the graph will now go through 1 on the y-axis because we've shifted all the aspects of that graph up by one unit. You can see here that shifting a increasing graph up, we still don't intersect the x-axis. So let's see what happens if we shift a graph down. So y is equal to a half to the power of x and we're going to move the graph two units down. So from all its original points, we move it two units down. So from there, it moves one, two down. Okay, and my new graph is now in this position. Okay, and because we've moved it two down, the asymptote of the graph has also moved two units down. 
and it will now light y equals to negative 2. And you can see here, because we've moved the graph down, it now intersects the y, I beg your pardon, the x-axis. So it is not true to say that exponential graphs never intersect the x-axis. They will if the equation meets certain conditions. Okay, so let's have a look at this in summary. The asymptote of the exponential function is the line y equals to the q value. Always draw the asymptotes in first if you are sketching a graph because then you can see where the limit of the graph is. The uh, exponential function will always intersect the y-axis, and remember that is the point where x is equal to 0. And as I said just now, depending on the equation, it may intersect the x-axis, it may not. So it just depends on the uh, values of a and q whether it will intersect the x-axis or not. The domain of an exponential function of any exponential function is the, the, a set of real numbers. The range will depend on those a and q values. So if a is positive, in other words, if the graph increases, then the range will be y is bigger than q. It will be all the y values above the asymptote. But if the a value is negative, in other words, if the graph decreases, then your range will be all the values lower than the asymptote, y is less than q. When you are sketching an exponential, as with any graph, it's important that you always show the intercepts with the axes. If the equation only has a y-intercept, you must calculate the coordinates of at least one other point. You can't sketch a graph with only one value, you need at least two values in order to sketch the graph.